go. Vice President Joe Biden live in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Let's listen. It's good to be back with you all. I tell you what, uh, the uh, I want to thank General Cope uh, for uh, accompanying me up here. I get the honor of introducing the general, you know? Uh, I was back here on February the 11th to welcome home members of the 3rd Infantry Brigade uh, Combat Team in Afghanistan, 155 of you. Got off that plane in the middle of the night. The only thing that's more exciting seeing you getting off is watching your families watch you all get off. So it's an honor to be back here so soon. I know many of you have just gotten home in the past few weeks, so welcome home. And I know the, uh, from experience uh, that your families uh, want more than anything to spend time with you. And so every time I show up at a welcome home ceremony, I'm always worried about getting in the way because I remember my son came back home from Iraq after a year. Um, you know, there were all these ceremonies, and I kept saying, hell, man, stop. I want to see my kid, you know? <laughs> you know, so, you know. So anyway, I, uh, I get it. So let me just say how much gratitude the President and I have and all Americans do for you all. You guys have been in the fight from the beginning, and the risk you've taken, the, the incredible sacrifices you've made, your comrades you've lost, the losses you've personally endured. You've been... Uh, some of the most, some of the most inhospitable terrain in the world. I've been there a number of times, back up in those damn mountains. I'm, I'm, my God, I get a helicopter go down at 9,800 feet, and all I got on is a vest, a, a bulletproof vest and a helmet. I'm out of breath climbing up uh, 40 clicks. I mean, 40 feet, and you guys are up there, 60, 80 pound packs running around. I got, you're amazing. You just are amazing. I'm in awe of the job you do. In awe of the job. As I said back in February, I want to also thank your families. You know, uh, uh, they made sacrifices as well, those intangible sacrifices, uh, those missed births and those missed birthdays, those missed graduations, those missed occasional funeral, perhaps more than anything else, just being missed, just not having you home. The famous poet, there was a famous poet by the quote, John Milton. He said, they also serve who only stand and wait. And your families serve as well, and the rest of America owes your families a debt of gratitude as well. And so to all the families that, that are listening. I want to say their service is as real as yours, and it's as, appreci as appreciated. To the soldiers here, you are the most capable warriors. Let me say this without any fear of contradiction. You are the most capable warriors in the history of the world. There has never, 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 never been a fighting force as capable as you are. It's my job today, my honor, uh, uh, to talk a little bit about the man that uh, I get to work with every day. We just got to uh, spend time with the assaulters who uh, um, uh, got bin Laden. And, uh, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm, the president can be mad I'm taking so long. But, you know, uh, t today was, quote, Grandfather's Day. So I went by in the early this morning before I came out here to my granddaughter's little spring play. And uh, after it's all over, she said, Pop, come back to my classroom with me. I said, I can, honey. She said, you going someplace in Air Force, too? I said, yeah, I am, babe. She said, where are you going? I said, going to True Story. I said, I'm going to Fort Campbell. I said, we're going to see the guys out there who, who, who got Osama bin Laden. It's absolutely true story. She said, Pop. And she grabbed a little friend of hers and she said, my pop's going out to see the whales. <laughs> Not the seals, the whales. Because if they're that good, they got to be big, man. They got to be big. Well, you guys are the gorillas. I tell you, I want to tell you, look, uh, I've watched, uh, I've been around a while with great presidents. I've watched presidents make some difficult decisions. They've all had to make difficult decisions. But sitting in every meeting, getting ready, planning for this mission of assault, for the mission to get bin Laden, I saw something extraordinary. I saw a president who was uh, told the odds, told the odds weren't, uh, weren't but much more than 50-50, that he'd be there and we could do this. But there are considerably less than 100%. And I, along with all the rest of his national security team, the Secretary of Defense, State, everyone else, we sat around there and he asked our advice and we gave him our advice and, and we, we told him a little this and that. And finally, 
He just looked at all of us, and I got faith in McRaven. I got faith in these guys. He walked off on his own without anybody giving him any guarantees at all, and he decided because he believed in not only the SEALs, but believes in all of you. He has absolute, total faith in all of you. And he made that determination, and it, uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it, it was an amazing thing to watch. But it was because he had this absolute confidence that you're there. And so he decided when he got in office, because of the fight you all were in from the beginning, that the number one priority was to get Osama bin Laden. And he knew the risks. He knew there were significant risks. And most importantly, special operations risks to the people who were risking their lives getting there. But he didn't hesitate, nor did your guys did. Bob Gates said something interesting. I've known Bob for a long time. He said it was one of the gutsiest decisions I've ever seen made and one of the gutsiest raids. This is going to go down in history, what happened. This is going to go down in history. And here to introduce your commander-in-chief, the guy that I'm proud to serve with, is one of the country's leading warriors himself, Deputy Commanding General of the 10th Airborne Division, General Jeffrey Colt. Ladies and gentlemen, General Colt. Thank you, sir. I can only try to tell you today just how proud of you that this division and this local community are. But more importantly today, you're going to get to hear from the commander in chief just how appreciative he is of all of your service and your sacrifices. Please join me in this great privilege of welcoming the president of the United States, Barack Obama. Division Air Assault, hello. hello. General Colt, thank you for that great introduction. It was great because it was brief. <laughs> More importantly, thank you for the extraordinary leadership that you've shown uh, here at one of the largest Army bases in America. <laughs> and let me just say, uh, I make a lot of decisions. One of the earliest and best decisions I made was choosing one of the finest vice presidents in our history, Joe Biden, right here. <laughs> Chaplain Miller, thank you for the beautiful invocation. Uh, I, I want to thank General Colt for welcoming me here today, along with your great Command Sergeant Major, Wayne St. Louis. <laughs> The Quartet and 101st Division Band. All these troopers behind me, you look great. You notice they kind of hesitated. I... And we got a lot of folks in the house. We've got military police and medical personnel. We've got the Green Berets, the 5th Special Forces Group. I think we've got a few Air Force here. Oh. <laughs> well, we thought we did. There we go, okay. Come on. And of course, the legendary Screaming Eagles. Uh -huh. <laughs> and all, all, although they're not in the audience, I want to acknowledge the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, the Night Stalkers, for their extraordinary service. Now, I've got to say, some of you are starting to look a little familiar. Because last December, when we were at Bagram, 
I, I was out there to thank you for your service, especially during the holidays. And we had a great rally, a big, big crowd. It seemed like everybody was there from the 101st. And since then, I know we've had quite a few homecomings. The Rakashans. <laughs> Destiny, strike, but stone. <laughs> and some of the division headquarters, uh, the gladiators, on behalf of a grateful nation, welcome home. Of course, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with General Campbell, Command Sergeant Major Schroeder, and all the Screaming Eagles and troops that are still, still risking their lives uh, in theater. Uh, and I'm so pleased that Ann Campbell and Marla Schroeder and some of the inspiring military spouses are here. Where are they at? Right over there. We are grateful to you. God bless you. There they are. Thank you so much. This happens to be Military Spouse Appreciation Day. And we honor your service as well. Now, I didn't come here to make a, a really long speech. I know you're hearing that. It's all like, yeah, it's hot. What I really wanted to do was come down, shake some hands, I came here for a simple reason, to say thank you on behalf of America. This has been a historic week in the life of our nation. Thanks to the incredible skill and courage of countless individuals, intelligence, military, over many years, the terrorist leader who struck our nation on 9-11 will never th uh, threaten America again. <laughs> Yesterday, I traveled to New York City. And along with some of the 9-11 families, laid a wreath at Ground Zero in memory of their loved ones. I met with the first responders, the firefighters, the police officers, the Port Authority officers, who lost so many of their own when they rushed into those burning towers. I promise that our nation will never forget those we lost that dark September day. And today, here at Fort Campbell, I had, a pri I had the privilege of meeting the extraordinary special ops folks who honored that promise. And it was a chance for me to say on behalf of all Americans and people around the world, job well done. Job well done. They're America's quiet professionals, because success demands secrecy. But I will say this, like all of you, they could have chosen a life of ease. But like you, they volunteered. They chose to serve in a time of war, knowing they could be sent into harm's way. They trained for years. They're battle-hardened. They practiced tirelessly for this mission. And when I gave the order, they were ready. In recent days, the whole world has learned just how ready they were. These Americans deserve credit for one of the greatest intelligence and military operations in our nation's history. But so does every person who wears America's uniform, the finest military the world has ever known. And that includes all of you, men and women of the 101st.